Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's project, I've got an aluminum loading ramp here. I had this when I had my dump truck. It had a 12-foot bed on it, and this ramp is 12 foot long, and this is what we use to load the truck with trash and materials and the such. However, that truck is now gone, and now I have a 10-foot dump trailer and this is two foot too long so we've got to figure out how to cut off at least two foot of this ramp weld it back together so we can store it and transport it safely in the new dump trailer so let's get started in today's video and try to figure out how to get this done today's video is sponsored by king metals they've got all your fabrication needs in one location from hinges to hardware balusters to metal decor brass to aluminum and a whole lot more you name it they've got it check them out today at kingmetals.com now let's get back to today's video okay so here's the aluminum ramp right here it's basically about 28 inches wide and this one now is currently 12 feet long we got to cut a couple feet off of this in order to get it in the dump trailer and I'm going to try to maintain the ramp end of this uh, this ramp right here. It tapers down to zero. It's about six or eight inches here, tapering down to zero. This is going to help us get us on the uh, get it on the ground flat. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just scribing a line right here, right on the seam. There's a seam right there, and I'm going to go ahead and cut that uh, right on the seam and on the backside. I didn't show this. You'll see it a little bit later where the two seams come together. It's just a great position. All right, I got my metal cutoff saw right here for the aluminum, and uh, one th I thought I might be able to get through this pretty good with this, but you know there sure is a difference between a metal cutoff saw and aluminum uh, aluminum blade. Uh, this metal just uh, didn't quite get it, and uh, you know gummed up, so I changed out to the aluminum blade, and of course everything cuts through like butter. Now, there's the salvaged piece that we're going to be welding on. And then we're going to go ahead and mark this back to the right length. You can see I'm cutting about two feet out right on another seam right there. Just using a Sharpie to mark along the seam. And uh, just squaring down to be sure I get a nice square cut. You know, I thought about uh, different ways of doing this. I thought about the plasma cutter and I thought about... Uh, you know just different ways of doing it and I thought this would probably be the uh, the best way and it did it worked out pretty good this you never know until you get started doing something it's pretty thick stuff you can see it's about three quarters of an inch thick right there and I cut right through there nice straight cut and everything lines up really good all right I'm gonna break out the, the champion uh, uh, carbides right here choose one and I'm gonna put it in the die grinder and I'm gonna cut a bevel on both sides of the cutting edge and the reason why I'm using a die grinder here is I'm trying to you know I, I want to keep the metal as clean as possible I didn't want to get any contaminants in there I was thinking about using a flap disc uh, or you know some sort of sanding disc in order to to get it cut down but I thought the die grinder would be the best way like I said just trying to keep it nice and clean and and keep all the contaminants out when I go ahead and and weld it up you know a nice little aluminum uh, welding job right here uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm filming this, this short little video right here is this is a good opportunity to use the uh, HTP Pro Pulse 300 in the aluminum MIG mode not a push pull or a spool gun uh, this is a uh, this is just straight MIG aluminum not everybody does it and it, you don't see it uh, too often but uh, it's pretty unique and uh, it's a good process with the other side all cleaned up and beveled out and cleaned out, the same thing. I'm repeating the process right here uh, with the die grinder. And granted, it takes a little bit of time uh, to get it just right, but I think that the payoff is good rather than uh, having any kind of contaminants and uh, possibly ruining the weld. And then the stainless steel wire wheel right here uh, to clean up the edges about an inch away to get everything nice and clean and get down to some clean metal. Get some air, blow everything off nice and clean. And there it is, nice tight fit. There's the HTP Pro Pulse 300. And I've got spooled up with some 4043, some 35,000s 4043 aluminum. 
And uh, one thing about this it, it, aluminum MIG is it takes a little bit to get the adjustments just right. But once you get the adjustments just right, you're, you're good to go. And, uh, you know, I had to work with it here a little bit, but I ultimately ended up, I believe, on the flat right there, running horizontal. Um, about 425 inches a minute, I think, was the sweet spot for this particular application. And you can see that uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, you know, it's filling the gap in nice and flat. And I'm just working my way across. Now, like I said, you know, aluminum MIG, it, it has its place. You know, the, the, the only disadvantage to this is it only has a six-foot gun lead. So, you know, you're limited on the space that you're having to work. But in this situation with this ramp, or I've done a couple of other things in the past, uh, aluminum boat masts, got a video on that. Uh, it worked out really well because I'm able to weld everything right from my welding table. Works really good. It's nice and smooth when everything is operating uh, just right. You can see the bead in there, lays in there really nice, just like a regular MIG bead. All right, got this side done, and uh, that's what it looks like. Not clean, not touched. That's just untouched. That's just the way it was when it came when I was done welding. All right, here's the back side, and you can see the two seams I was talking about where it comes together right there. So this is my uh, little run at uh, vertical up right here, and I got to say it. Uh, I started at 425 inches a, a, a minute, and I had to tune that down quite a bit to get the adjustment just right. It was a little too warm going uphill, so I got it turned down to about 325 inches a minute, and uh, that was a sweet spot, and that worked out uh, pretty good the rest of the way. You know, vertical up uh, works just as good going uphill as it does on the horizontal or the flat position. Um, yeah, surprisingly, you think you get a lot of drip or, or, or fallout, but, uh, you know, it uh, holds in there really nice and, and works pretty good. Here's a cool little deal. The thing about aluminum MIG welding, it sure puts a show with sparks. <laughs> and the aluminum coming off of there it's uh, super bright and uh, they fly like crazy all right there it is uh, you know all that's welded in got both sides welded in and that was a quick little uh, fun little project repair project I thought I'd throw in there for you guys you know not everybody does aluminum MIG uh, and I just wanted to take an opportunity and show you guys that all right, so here's the ramp right here. Once it was 12 feet long, now it's 10 feet long, a little bit shorter than 10 actually. And it hooks onto the back of the dump trailer right there. And uh, now I'm able to uh, get it to fit inside and shut the doors on the trailer where before I had it sticking out of the top of the trailer. Much better way to go, be much better job. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Welcome to Jimbo's Garage.